Welcome back. We are almost done migrating our ASP.NET app to ASP.NET Core. All of the major components have been migrated over. All that's left is to iterate and move over some remaining controllers and views. Uh, now, at this point, before we wrap up, I do want to show how you can deploy an app that's in this state, because one of the great features about incremental migration is that you can deploy into production even when you've only migrated some of the controllers and some endpoints are still running on ASP.NET. This avoids the problem that other migration approaches have where it can take months to migrate all of the application to ASP.NET Core and along the way, if you want to deploy updates to production, you need to have a separate branch where you're making those bug fixes, where you're adding those features. And then you need to keep these branches in sync, which can be a nightmare. So in this case, we're going to take our app as it is today, mostly but not entirely migrated. We're gonna deploy it into Azure App Service. Uh, before we do that, I do wanna make a, one more small change to the app I forgot about previously. Um, in our um, let's see, in our views for ASP.NET session state, I'm going to modify the ASP.NET Core apps session view to specifically say ASP.NET Core session demo on the page itself so that it's easy to distinguish between the session information served by the ASP.NET app and the ASP.NET Core app once we've got the app deployed. Okay, one small little a cosmetic change. Now let's go ahead over to the Azure portal and see how we can deploy this app. So I've created a resource group I call Upgrade Demo. And I already have some resources here because I want to make sure this video doesn't go too long. If we had another 20 minutes, we'd create everything. But this video is not about how to set up an Azure SQL database. It's about how to deploy an application using incremental migration into the cloud. So I've already set up a virtual network. I've uh, created a SQL Server, and I've created two databases there and populated them with some information. I've got the eShop catalog uh, that we're going to get our catalog information from, and I have eShop identity, which the ASP.NET app will use for authentication. So we've got some users in here. We've got some items in here. I also have a private endpoint so that the eShop demo SQL server is not publicly accessible. It's only accessible through this private endpoint on the upgrade, upgrade demo VNet for security purposes. And so now we've got our database, we've got our network. All we need to do is deploy our app. So let's go ahead and do that. We are going to create in here a new resource. We are going to create an app service plan. And this would be a similar um, set of steps if you wanted to deploy to Azure Kubernetes service or um, even to a VM. You would just deploy the two applications side by side as I'm going to show here. So we are going to create the app service plan that we're going to deploy to. Make sure it's an upgrade demo. Um, let's see. We'll just call it, let's see what would be a good name for this one. Um, perhaps we'll just call it eShop. I think that's, uh, that's what we're deploying. I'm going to make it a Windows app service plan because we are going to deploy a .NET Framework app to it, the original ASP.NET app. Now, you don't have to have both of the apps in the same app service plan, but if you can, I mean, there's really no downside to that if there's not some other logistical reason to not do it. In general, because there will be requests proxied between these apps, you want them as close together as you can. So having them in the same app service plan is great if that makes sense for you. You can choose East US, which is nice and close to me. Uh, pricing plan's fine. All right, so we're going to go to review and create, and we are going to set up this new app service plan. So hit create. I will uh, pause the demo for just a minute while this gets set up. They usually only take a minute or two to create. Oh, in fact, I don't even have to pause it because while I was going for my pause button, um, we found that the um, app service plan is ready to go. All right, so now. Let's go ahead and create a new resource. We're going to create a web app. Uh, web app, create. Uh, so we're actually gonna create two web apps. The first one we're gonna create, and we'll put them both in upgrade demo. First one I'm gonna call eShop Net FX, because this is the .NET Framework original eShop app. Its runtime stack is ASP.NET uh, 4.8 will work. Of course, it's Windows. Uh, we will deploy it to East US, just like everything else. And our plan is the eShop um, app service plan. Okay. Uh, deployment options are fine. In networking, because our database 
is available only in that VNet, we are going to uh, enable network injection. We're going to inject into the upgrade demo VNet. That's the virtual network I created previously for this demo. And we are going to set up outbound access. We need a subnet for this. So let's create a subnet that our apps can use uh, to make requests into the um, virtual network. We'll just call this web apps. Um, that address block seems fine. Okay, and we're going to go to review and create. Let it sort of validate that this looks good and then we will click create. Once that kicks off, okay, let's go back home. And while that's happening, we can create the second resource. We're going to create another web app. And so you see this deployment is the same as you would do for um, a single web app, but now you just have the two side by side and we're going to set some very important configuration values so that they can find each other. And that's really all the magic there is to it. Now, of course, I'm doing this manually in the portal for demo purposes, but you would actually wanna do this through CI, CD or whatever other release mechanisms you have. Uh, maybe you have ARM templates, uh, BICEP templates and so on. You wanna use all of those best practices. I'm just going through the portal because that makes the better demo, but ultimately it would be some sort of CD pipeline that just deploys these both when the time is right. Okay, so we're going to deploy another web app into the upgrade demo resource group. This one I will call eShop Net7 because this is targeting .NET 7. We will use .NET 7 as the runtime stack. It will run on Windows, put it in the same region, and we will choose our um, app service plan again. As before, we're going to go to networking. We're going to enable network injection. We inject into upgrade demo VNet and we set up uh, outbound access using that same subnet. Um, something to point out, I didn't enable inbound access. I didn't set up like private endpoints for the ASP.NET app here. I could have, and that's probably um, the, the best way to do this. I initially am going to have the ASP.NET app be publicly um, accessible also just so that it makes it easy to deploy to and so that we can demo that if we want to. Um, but I really, I think at the end of the day in production, what you would do is you would have the ASP.NET Core app have a public endpoint that users would hit or have it behind a load balancer that, that it goes to it. But the ASP.NET app, the original .NET Framework one, no longer needs a public endpoint. It's good enough to have it available on that VNet for the ASP.NET Core app to call into because customers will never make requests directly to the ASP.NET app anymore. For new um, endpoints, they go to the Core app. For old endpoints, they go to the Core app and have those requests proxy because from their point of view, the only app that matters is this eShop Net 7 one. All right, so this should be almost done deploying. All right. So at this point, if I go look in my resource group here, we've got a few new items. We've got the app service plan I set up and we've got um, eShop. Well, eShop Net 7 hasn't shown up yet. Maybe I'll refresh this. eShop Net 7, eShop NetFX, two different web apps, as well as the App Insights instances to go with them. Okay, so now let's deploy our applications. I'm going to switch back to Visual Studio. Like I said, you really ought to be deploying via like some sort of continuous delivery mechanism, use GitHub Actions, use Azure DevOps. For demo purposes, we're just going to do it um, through VS because that's, that's super simple and I need to keep this video as short as possible. So I'm going to go to Publish. I'm going to publish my ASP.NET app to Azure App Service. At this point, we'll uh, find that app service instance we just set up. Uh, come on. Why is it not finding me? Uh, all right, let's try that again. I'm signed in. We're going to go to publish. Let this start up. Oh, OK, here we are at a publish profile, Azure, Azure app service. OK seems like it's working this time. So inside of my subscription, we're going to go into the upgrade demo resource group and deploy to the eShop NetFX web app. Okay. And I'm going to publish. Now this will take a few minutes just to upload all of the files. So at this point, I will pause the video just for a minute or two until this is done. Then we'll return. We'll do the same thing with the core app and then we'll be ready to configure them and we'll be done. Go ahead and pull this output up so I can sort of monitor the progress here. 
Okay, we have published the ASP.NET app. So now we're going to do the same thing with our ASP.NET Core app. We're going to just uh, do the simple right-click Publish to Azure, Azure App Service Windows, since that's the OS our App Service plan is using. eShop Net 7 is what we want here. Click Finish. Okay, we've got our Publish profile, and we will hit Publish once again. Pause the video so you don't have to sit here for three minutes watching it upload files. And then we will uh, go on to the next steps. Okay, so um, deployment is done for the ASP.NET Core apps. So now we've published both apps into separate web apps, sharing an app service plan. All we need to do now is set some configuration so that they will work correctly in the cloud. So let's jump over back to the portal, the Azure portal, and let's take a look first at eShop NetFX. Uh, so for this one, this is our ASP.NET app. For this to work in the cloud, we do the same configuration we would have prior to starting the migration. Nothing here changes. Um, what that means is that we're going to need our connection strings for the two databases we're using, the catalog database and the user identity database. Um, now here, I'm just doing this with username, password, connection strings. Um, we've got catalog DB context as one that we need. Uh, I'll add that one. The, the, the right way to do this would be to use managed identity so that the web apps could access the database without having to use username and password. That's the more secure option when you're deploying to the cloud. Um, if we wanted to go that route, I have to make a few small changes to how my ASP.NET app is connecting to the database in order for it to be compatible with managed identity. And in this case, I want to make sure that this video doesn't go too long, so we're just going to do the, the super simple drop-in solution here. Um, but, you know, in the real world, definitely use managed identity for this sort of authentication. Uh, if you're trying to make a demo video in under 15 minutes, sure, use username and password. The other one we're going to add here is we need to add a connection string for the identity DB context. So we'll say identity DB context, give it an our string, SQL Azure, say OK. OK, so we'll save those, save those settings. So now our ASP.NET app should be functional. It should be able to access the database, and it is ready to go. We'll go back to here, and we will go into our eShopNet 7 app. And now this one's interesting. Um, the, the main thing I want to show is that we need to set the fallback address for where it's going to route requests that it's not able to serve. Because remember, if I come back over into Visual Studio, uh, our ASP.NET Core app, when we created it using the incremental migration tooling, we added this YARP proxy middleware here, and we're loading configuration for it from uh, configuration, and we automatically populated our app settings with this new section on a reverse proxy, but this address element is not filled in because the tooling for us will automatically populate that with the URL for the ASP.NET app when we launch our application. So I can hit F5 in Visual Studio, both apps start up, and we're automatically falling back to the right location. Now that I've sort of manually deployed these two apps independently, we need to specify this ourselves so that we know where to forward requests to the original app if we find an endpoint that the user hits that we haven't already um, given a uh, implementation for in the core app. Now this is nested inside of our configuration. It's reverse proxy, clusters, fallback cluster, destinations, fallback app address. If you set an app setting in Azure App Service, you can specify this hierarchy by just putting two underscores in between each level of the hierarchy. So it ends up looking like this. We come back over here. I'm going to add a new application setting. And here's what it looks like. Reverse proxy, underscore, underscore, clusters, underscore, underscore, and so on, all the way out to address. And so we're now setting that setting. And our app was set up so that environment variables like app settings in Azure App Service will override uh, app settings.json. So we in here can uh, just put the URL of the ASP.NET application. In this case, it was eShopNetFX.AzureWebsites.net. Say OK. This is where we're going to route requests to if we can't serve them directly. So that one's set. Uh, we can also do an application setting here for our uh, DB context connection string. So 
connection strings underscore underscore catalog db context. And again, uh, we should be using managed identity, but for the sake of time, I'm just dropping in with my super secure test password for the database that's getting deleted in 10 minutes. And we're going to use just username, password, authentication to um, connect to this eShop demo database where we have all of our catalog items. We'll say OK. We're going to save this. So now that we save that, it's going to uh, update the uh, app settings. It will restart the web app as part of changing the configuration settings. And so now we are ready to go. I'm going to wait just a minute here. I'll pause the video just for a minute or two while we wait for the apps to kind of start up, and then we'll test it out. OK, so I've waited just a minute or two. Um, it doesn't take long for these apps to restart, so we should be ready. Let's go ahead and go out to eshopnet7.azurewebsites.net. OK, so here we are. So from the user's point of view, this is the application. There are not two from their perspective. Uh, all of that falling back happens behind the scenes. So we're here at eShop Net 7. We can see we've got all of our items. We can go look at details for an item. We've got our footer as before showing the um, time the session started, the server serving the request. We've got our user agent stuff. So all, everything that was working locally is still working. If we go to a site like Session that uses the ASP.NET app, transparently to the user, they're seeing this served. It looks like the exact same app, but this is being served by ASP.NET, whereas this is being served by ASP.NET Core. If we want to test this out, we'll put in a integer, some string, update session. OK, so now there's our session. And if we change this to be uh, ASP.NET Core session, you can see the ASP.NET Core session endpoint, which is served by the ASP.NET Core app, has the same um, same session items. We can update them again, come back to our ASP.NET session, and we and we have the updates. If we go to user info, uh, we are redirected here. We can log in uh, using our test account, and we will be redirected to a page served by the ASP.NET Core app that shows all of our claims for the logged in user. And whether we go to ASP.NET, ASP.NET Core, all of these pages are appearing to be the same app. They're sharing session state. They're sharing identity. We can log off even from the ASP.NET Core app now, thanks to our shared cookies. And at this point, we have deployed a mostly but not entirely upgraded application, and the users can use it uh, live. Uh, from here, the next steps would be to go ahead and just migrate those remaining few controllers and views using the exact same process we've used before to do the rest of that migration, then remove the ASP.NET app entirely, remove the reverse proxy, and we will be all the way migrated to ASP.NET Core.